Well, I'm not going to sit like a news anchor. I don't want to sit like that. Hi, tonight on the news. Just because you change your voice doesn't make it different, Bob. Literally, you just sit side side a little bit. It makes more sense. I don't want to sit like that. I mean, I'm not trying to stop you from sitting the way you're sitting. I just want to sit the way that I want to sit. Here. I'm not difficult. I'm what I am. I'm never difficult. I didn't say you, I don't want to change. I don't want to change. You don't want to change the way you want to sit. I don't want to change the way I want to sit. But I'm also the difference is I'm not asking you to change the way you're sitting. But the way you're sitting, it makes it a little. I I I mean, I'm not I'm not the editor. I feel like it makes it a little difficult to edit because we're not in separate screens. We're in the same one. Well, that's not a note I received. We're also we're, there's a whole chunk between us. There's nothing. There's nothing. Um. Going on between us here. So call you just now. And correction. Hello, my name is Monet Exchange. We don't start our podcast like that. Bitch, you start. I want that's how I want to start today. That's how I want to start. So I didn't tell you how to sit. Don't tell me how to start. And now I'm in your square. I will also say we actually start every podcast like that. We just record it after. No, we don't start. Thank our you, Jacob. Pod- we don't start our podcast that way. It's been recorded years ago. We don't start our recording sessions going, hi. My name is Monet Exchange, so I know the, how the podcast starts. I'm the one who... Jacob just gathered you. That is not Jacob true. Jacob just gathered you. Also, we've never started... It, have, do, you even, do you even listen to um, our review show? It doesn't, the review show doesn't start that way. This so is, does either one of you watch the This is Sibling show? Watchery. Does either one of you watch Watchery? Because it doesn't start that way. Oh, so you want to say... You, you want that? Does that make more sense I'm just you? saying, both of you act like Watchery starts this way, and it doesn't. Well, we were going to record a rival, but now we're doing Watchery, so... It kind of makes sense. That's not true. We're doing watch the whole time. We never find a dude. Wow, you didn't see Jacob's text message this morning, did you? Wow. What's, wow, Bob. What text did Jacob send? That is not... Did you send a, a text saying we're doing rivalry this morning, Jacob? Made Monet is doing a bit, but it's very funny. <laughs> you just made that up. Y'all are wild this morning. How you doing, Bob? So, we are here for sibling washery where we review episodes of rupaul's drag race and this time we're doing rupaul's drag race all-star seven episode eight aka santa school for girls you know i um i mean off the bat in general this was not one of my favorite episodes well that's when you say that because uh, the uh, uh, the fans the people watch the show are saying that this is one of the better acting challenges that we've seen in a while i don't feel that I mean, and, and it wasn't it wasn't the response that I got on the pitch stuff. When I, whenever I read the comments, also a lot of people a lot of people were, were talking about last. A lot of people were saying in the last episode they were like, "We agree, we do not want more room design challenges." That's not prior. true. I read the comments on Patreon and on the on and on the um, YouTube, and a lot of people were saying, "I don't know what I was talking about. I really love the design challenges." Some people say, "Yeah, you know, I do like design challenges more, but it was not overwhelming." A lot of people really like the designing a room thing. They agreed that the All Stars Five one was not as good as the All Stars Four one. The design of a hotel room, I think, was All Stars Five One was, but people, a lot of people, really enjoyed it. Yeah, it was different, and it just called for something different. And they liked that it shows variety. I, I mean, don't, I don't know. I true. absolutely is true. Because I went back and I read oh, I absolutely myself. read the comments, and I was like, "Have you read the comments?" Yeah, I did. The comments, and I was like, "I don't." No, if uh, if that's what most of the people is have been saying, I, I I'm aside. I love the design room challenge on both All Stars. On, on how many likes? How many likes do I have? Uh, that's many likes on it. Don't uh, have any? Oh, no, that's interesting. Uh, I'm I'm rewatching the club challenge right now, and because of this convo, so good. How many likes do I got? This has two likes. I love the designer room challenge, room design, and new looks. How many likes now? Just because, okay. Just I'm just because, asking. Hold on, hold on, let me say this. Just because the comment doesn't have every comment. I'm let me finish. Just asking. Every comment posted on Patreon does not get a whole bunch of likes. This okay, is Jay, I'm just asking. Wow, you are. I'm just asking. Mel, Bob has some nerves saying the club challenge wasn't entertaining to watch when Mo and Mo painted the walls literally peak, peak drag race. It has six likes. Um, yes. Yeah, so. can, can you read one of the other ones? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going through. Uh, the club design challenge. The club design challenge is really cute, but the but the hotel one in All Stars Five was not. I vastly prefer traditional design challenge. Also, the Roger look from the design challenge truly was a chop. When we saw it from the workroom, my first comment was, "Girl, what is this mess?" Uh, but yeah, so there a lot of people do but did like you re- that. You didn't read any, any other ones. I, I'm, I'm going in order as I seen this one was was just put down the middle. The one I just read. Mm-hmm. Um, Jolianne said design challenge for for clothing. The greater than, so I guess there's how many likes that one? That one has one like. I love the club design challenge on All Stars, but I prefer a variety of challenges over repeats on the same season. 
Jax, without hesitation, I prefer a design challenge that pertains to the art of well, getting I'll, up and dry. I'll, 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 say I'll shut it down with this. The top comment on YouTube, which has the most likes, it says... I, it has 12 likes, okay. That's the most out of all of them. Okay. It says, I enjoyed the room design challenge on All-Star 7, though I enjoyed it much more than the room challenge. There was no design t- room design challenge on All-Star 7, first of all. So that's where something is just fact- fundamentally factually wrong. There was no room design challenge on All-Star 7. It actually said AS4. I just read it wrong. Okay. So you so you fucked it up. Got it. Continue. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, yeah. I missed it. Yeah, you it. fucked it up. Continue. So this person did not get it wrong. You fucked it the fuck up. Um, but it makes more sense for drag queens than designing some sort of a hotel room. And um and I would have died seeing y'all both casually walk around Target. Okay, that, that, that's just talking about it. So family. okay, so this person is saying they wouldn't like it, but they want to see, but they're literally saying they want to see some of the elements of the designer room challenge. So this person is confused, and I'm in your square. What? Man, you're being really wild this morning. <laughs> you're being wild. Anyway, this is all this is about. We're talking about um Santa School for Girls. And um off the bat, coming into the workroom, you uh, coming to the workroom. Coming from the last challenge where Trinity blocked Evie, um, I still you think that it was a stupid move for her to block Evie. Because you're because you're saying that people well, hey, okay, I, I am a little bit confused. Because to me, you're saying blocking drinks drinks, oh my god. Blocking jinx every week would be shady. But Bob, in every out on the pit stop, uh, when you and I were talking to the season, you were like, block jinx every week. So you're giving us mixed messages, mama. Well, sometimes when you're there, your strategy changes. When you're in a situation where jinx has the ability to block you more than you have the ability to block her, and then if she's also dabbling in vengeance, it might not fare well for you. So that gives jinx more opportunities to block you. So if you're always blocking jinx, and jinx is taking note of that, then she can start blocking you as well. So I think it makes sense if you get there to change your strategy. Just because you show up with one strategy doesn't mean you have to keep it all the way through, despite how it's playing out. But it's what you're saying. Every week, though, on the pit stop, you're saying, I would block jinx every week. No, I don't. I mean, I, I, I probably changed my position a few times. I don't think it makes sense to block jinx every week because I don't think every week will be a challenge that jinx will excel at. So, quote you, she's a front runner. You need to trip the bitch at the front of the race, not the bitch in the back. Well, it depends on which 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 week it is. For example, if we just had three or two acting challenges in a row, I probably wouldn't block Jinx the next week because I don't think that next challenge would actually be something that Jinx would be able to excel at. Exactly. And and I think it's shown in, in some examples where a few times where where well one time where Jinx got blocked and it just it didn't even matter. It, like there was there was just no point in doing it. But again, to, to to a conversation we had last week, it's kind of a mixed bag. You never know what what RuPaul is feeling. RuPaul might want us to do a bake a cake challenge this week, and can can Jinx cook? I don't bake. I don't fucking know. So you, you honestly do do never know. Um, and so there's nothing really fun that happens in in the in the fallout. Everyone just saying they're fucking stupid. Oh, I'm gonna win. I mean, what is happening is that me and Shay we have not won anything since week one. She and I are sitting there, ball headed, star one star and confused, was waiting for another star. And but to be fair, we have been in the top multiple weeks, right? Like we, Shay and I, have been like not not top two, but like when when the, what the fans call tops. When the when we're off stage and the judges are talking about the, the the three they talk about at the top of the thing. I mean the four and then the other four. So we've been in top of mind, but not tops, which is very are frustrating. there bottoms in this in this season of RuPaul's? I don't know. I mean, in theory, the judges don't talk about you in that judges thing that no one else that we don't see. In fear, they don't talk about you. Then, are you in the bottom? I don't. I don't know if that's true. You know what I mean? What I mean, uh, there. Well, I mean, there are no bottoms. There, there's right. no. There's no. There's no uh, demerit system. There's only point system. Right. So you don't get anything taken away, and you. You're the only way you can be penalized is if another drag queen on the stage uh, decides to block you. And we're doing the math, and we're like, because this is episode eight. We know we had uh, three weeks left, basically, until the grand finale. So Shay, so we, so going from this point on, we would have to to catch up with to be even with Jada. We both had to have at least two more wins to the finale in order to win. And Jada can't win anymore. Do you think at this point? Do you think you're gonna win the show? At this point, I still was confident I could win because I knew the talent show was coming up, and I felt really comfortable with my talent. And I thought that. But did you know it was going to be so many stars? Like what? I didn't know it was going to be so many stars, but I knew that I could. I would at least be in the top that week. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I was like, if there's a roast, that I was like, I was like, I, I was like, there's no way you can do an all star season and not do a roast. I was like, if a roast challenge is coming, I think I, I could win that one as well. And I felt comfortable with this one too. So I still saw a path to victory for myself. Okay. And how about Shay? Do you think she felt the same way? I don't know. I don't know. I know that in the in the second to last episode, she seems pretty defeated. 
Mm-hmm. We're not quite there yet. But yeah. I remember watching the second last episode being like, she does not feel, it doesn't seem like she feels great about her chances in this particular, yeah. you know, assignment. Yeah. Which I could see, like, that it's kind of one of the things, like, when, you, when, you, when you're not offered the, the, the grace of going home, you're kind of just there. And you have to just endure yeah. and just stick it out to the end no matter what. And, and, and you know, Trinity posted online being like, should we do this for a regular season? And I was like, I was one of the folks who was just like, no. But also, I feel like I don't think that every, I think it makes a lot of sense for an all-stars, all-winter season. I don't even think it makes sense for an all-star season, quite frankly. I think just, yeah. just for an all-winter season. Well, but no, let me not say that. What? What? This next one going up that they do this. Oh, really? Interesting. All that was bleed toss. You didn't know what I said. Oh, Jacobs is saying no. Well, that's what I heard. Jacob, bitch, are you are you working at the place? I mean, you don't work. No, no, that's not the truth. I mean, I don't think that's what I heard. That's what I saw online. I, don't, I mean, I don't know if it's well, true. Well, you both just heard different. That's things. That's not true. Right. Well, it's speculation. I don't know. Anyway, so um, but also like, I mean, do we really want to see like? I don't. You're right. I don't. Yeah, I think that being sent home first for some people is like, I think you've seen what you need to see, and, and it'd be it'd be for not to have them stick around for an entire season. I would have liked to see Derek Barry stick. I feel like Derek Barry had more to offer us in All Stars uh, Five. Well, I do think. Let me. Ref- I I'm not going to refer. I, I do think that some people were sent home earlier than I would have sent them home, but that does not mean I think the entire cast. Needs to stick right. around the entire season. Right. So, yeah, would I like to see Derrick Barry there longer? Yes. Do I think that everyone in the cast should have stayed till the no, end? No, 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 no. Absolutely no, no. not. Um, I think Alexis and Taylor should have been there longer. She was, she was t- like, top four. What do you mean? I said longer. I was, I so was, you wanted like, to be in the, in the, in the final I was, three? I was really rooting for Alexis and Taylor a, a lot during that season. Like, she was one of my, she was one of my, she was my top two for sure. Your dark horse. No, I don't think she was dark horse. I don't think yeah, she, she was, she was like a, a front runner. And I think that I've, I've rooted for her during her season. Her original season. Come home, Bobby. I want you what to come if, home. I, if I was rooting for her. I just, because sometimes I don't, it's not necessarily about like the one. Sometimes I, I like two or three people at a time. And I just really enjoyed her on, on um, season three. On, on both her seasons of Drag Race. Season or three. Well, I didn't see, I didn't, I, didn't, I, I watched All Stars one. All Stars one is just such a, a, a clusterfuck of a, of a season. Yeah. I don't even know what. I mean, I was Team Raven through and through. I was that's when I was deep in my Raven nest. I was obsessed with Raven. Is this a spoon from your purse? No, this is a spoon from my hotel room. Okay, because I know Bob has his little uh, Mrs. Not Mrs. Doubtfire. Uh, what's the bitch with all the stuff in her purse? The Disney bitch. Mary Poppins. Yes, you know Bob got his little his, his little Mary Poppins bag. He have a toothbrush, uh, 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 <laughs> a knife, a charger, Carrying a fork. A toothbrush is not that weird. A syringe. She got all kind of shit over there, girl. Carrying a toothbrush is not strange. You don't carry a toothbrush with you? And not in my purse. I carry it in my toiletry bag. When you go places. <laughs> okay, and you, you also have loose money in there, so the money is just swishing around with your toothbrush. It's fine. Okay, so then um, up next we see the RuPaul. You used to put money in your mouth on stage. I know, and I started doing that. I used to get so now. So, so you think me and my, my yeah, my I, little one dollar is weird? Yes, Bob. The same, the same dirt that's probably on a twenty dollar bill is the same dirt on that dollar bill too. Not the same, but they, they're as dirty. Is my point? But that's what I'm saying. You used to, I used to see you put dollar bills mm. in your mouth. Not every day. In, in theory, you're doing you're putting a dollar in your mouth every day. I don't use a toothbrush every day. I have multiple toothbrushes. I have a toothbrush at me in Jacob's house. I have a toothbrush at me in Ezra's house. I have a toothbrush in my bag. And I have a toothbrush in my hotel room. Next up, RuPaul does this hello, hello, hello. And he comes to tell us a challenge. And it's Satan's school for girls. Now, so, and then they show us, like, what this is based on. Obviously, it's the Mean Girls thing. But there's this, like, 1970s movie called Satan's School. I think it's called Satan's School for Girls. And they show us a reference. And it's this, like, horror movie of these, like, girls in this, like, School and somewhere, and it's, it, it's this weird cult that I've never Mommy, heard of. There's also Mummy Dearest in there. There's a lot going on. Well, Mummy Dearest was, was a reference to the character, but the two movies it's referencing was Mean Girls and this Satan School for, and this Satan's Satan's Girls. There's school. like direct lines from Mummy Dearest. There's yeah, like lines straight from Mummy Dearest in there. Yeah, I think that, that the writers put that in there because they know a Rue loves that era of film. Rue loves that shit. But they showed they told the two movies referencing are A and B. 
And they show us the, the two movies, not the, in, in its entirety, because obviously everyone has seen Mean Girls. But they show us like the greatest hits of these films, so we like you know get the tone of what they're, of what they're trying to do. Okay. Um, and then we get to the casting, and Ru- RuPaul puts the winner of last week's uh, challenge, Trinity, in charge of picking um, the pecking order. Oh, no, to, yeah, to, to, to pick their roles. And Trinity, this is why I just, you see everybody was making fun of my alliance. This is why I was in my alliance with Trinity because it's paying off right now. I am reaping the the, the, the rewards of my alliance, Trinity. You can tell me more about that. Well, because, so she lets Vivian choose first because she's like, because it's such a smart way to do it though, because it, because Viv, Trin let, Viv let Trin pick last time. So Trinity's letting Viv pick first. So that works out for her. And she goes on in this order. And then it comes down to me and Jinx want the same role of Mrs. Mrs. Cameltoe. And um, I knew Trinity was going to let me pick first. So Trinity was like, oh, we should do an audition. So we both read. And then, um, <laughs> and then, in spite of whatever happened, Trina was like, "I'm gonna let Monet get um, get the role of Miss uh, Miss Till." And Jinx was, he's a feather. So what am I doing? A plot. Plot. Do should she let you pick before the, the Vivian though? No, because in the thing, I had like we had uh, Twitter Twitter jives. She knew I wanted Mrs. 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 Camelto. You just you just sent it over to her telepathically. Well, like in the, I mean, I don't know how into like the camera break, like as we were like replaying or whatever. I was like, I want Miss Camelot. She was like, I got you, girl. What if Viv would have picked Miss Camelot? We know, no, Viv wanted Viv, Viv wanted that role. No word. Yeah, I was like, they gonna backfire. No, she wanted. It, but what she if she would have backstabbed you? What if Trinity would have backstabbed you? What would you have done? I would have probably ripped her third nose job off the off of her nose like that chimpanzee in the. Like, <laughs> My chimpanzee! Uh, not my face, her face. He's killing her. Her face off. He's killing her. I would have fucking molly that bitch, but I knew Trinity wouldn't. We were we were we were in the thick of our twin, of our lines. There's no way she would have. But a back but a backstab from Trinity would have made brilliant TV. Oh, it would have been great TV. <laughs> <It would've> been... <laughs> but she wouldn't have. She knew she wouldn't have. Do you think that I mean why do you think everyone made fun of y'all's alliance? You know why everyone made fun of your alliance? Because it wasn't secret. Because y'all y'all were whispering and it wasn't a secret. Um like I, I just remember Jinx walking over like, "What are you guys talking about? The alliance?" That, that was about the funniest. <laughs> because Jinx is a little witch. We would be talking, and Jinx would just like this. This is me. I'm just me and Trinity. Yeah, girl, that's the weekend. This is Jinx. Yeah, girl, we got. It. <laughs> anyway, like Jinx would always be lurking in the back of us talking. Every time we were talking, she'd just always come and find her way, and then she'd act like she's looking for a fucking ukulele or something. But she, the, the bitch, know what she was doing. How often was she looking for the ukulele? She, she would. Jinx would always. Happened to misplace her ukulele when me and Trinity were talking. No lie, Trinity, am I lying? Every time Trinity, we're like, oh, I, I just can't find my ukulele, and she'll be fucking. Isn't that her. smart strategy though? Like, I want to know what these bitches are whispering about. If, mm-hmm. if I suspect there's a there's a little secret fancy going on, I want to know what the hell's going on over there. Yeah, that's what I would do. So, and then I and and as we all see, Jinx is. More than I think is on camera, Jinx was really upset that she did not give us to Like, she was really mad. Like, mad, mad. Like, on a scale of 1 to 10. 1 to 10, I would say Jinx was an 8. Like, 10 is like, you are uncontrollably angry. <laughs> 1 is like, you could literally care less. 8. Really? Yeah, Jinx was really mad. She really wanted his camel toe, and that's why. And how I, does she? Mani- how did the anger manifest? I think it. I think it, it was. It, it worked to her detriment because she her small part. It got too crazy. It was she, a little wild. It was, she was. She would put all her energy into sh- into what Patty should have been doing, into stretching. stretching. <laughs> well, I think that you know. I feel like. Okay, I'm trying to think about the last time I had like a, like a, there was a great acting challenge on on the show. I think it might have been 9021 Ho. Or maybe I don't even know if I actually even like 9021 Ho. There's just, there's just been some really weird acting challenge. I think the, the, the acting challenge started getting really strange at Breast World. Really? Breast World, I was like, what even is going on? And then and then I think peak, like, what is this, was the uh, American Horror Story um, bit they did on All Star 6. With uh, I didn't see, I didn't see that. That was that was the season that that, uh, that Kylie won. Oh, that's when we we were literally filming our season when so we missed. I missed that entire season because we were locked away. It was it was so long, it was so strange, it was so confusing. I didn't know what was going on. I was like, what even is happening during? Who did the All Stars for that? Who did the pit stop for that? Trixie. Yeah. It was just so bananas. This one wasn't this one wasn't as weird as that one, but it's just like I think it's getting to a point where like 
maybe they are a little they maybe they're a little too formulaic and they're all just slightly reminiscent of each other mm -hmm. you know what i mean you know what i need what a Halloween well, I, I saw the um the opening video we already talked about that we do we, we certainly have talked about the Hulu Oh, maybe we did. I before. Anyway, like, have we talked about it on here before? Not in depth. Oh, we, we haven't seen it yet. I mean, I haven't seen it yet. Yeah. I, all, all I talked about was the first, the first act and the, the first opening. Oh, you're right. We did. We talked about Jackie Beat writing on it. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. I'm get, in your box. Get out of my box. I'm in your box. Get out of my box. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so uh, yeah, yeah. So then we go and then and uh, y'all know how these work. Bob knows this from his season two. We get these challenges at about. We find out what the challenge is about ten o'clock in the morning. Yeah, roughly. Yeah, yeah. And then you get the script, and then for between ten and let's say like, we have the, you get the script at ten. You know your part by ten, and you start filming at about two o'clock, two three o'clock because they give you about three and a half hours to. Remember, I just did. Scraped. I ever film the next day? You know, I just you was so long ago. I was on Drag Race so long ago. Like, I, I like some of the stuff. It's just like it's such a, it's like a memory of a memory, or it's a memory of someone telling a story, or a memory of a story I've told, and fake memories are starting to replace real memories. Mm -hmm. So I don't even know anymore. Well, you get that uh, that goes all to say you don't have a ton of time to memorize your part. Like you, you're not like you're going to get home, go home, and you really get your shit. You do it that same day. Yeah. So, um, so we go to film, and did any of us happen the next day? I don't remember. I don't remember. I don't remember. How do you feel about the different? Yes. How do you both memorize lines? I just run them over and over again. Like I'm, I'm just one of the best way I memorize lines is just by running them over and over and over again, and that tends to work for me. I also just have a pretty good memory. You do have a good memory, and it's, especially for like short term stuff. So when something's locked in, it is. It is in there. Like once it's in there, it's where it lives and, until it escapes. You know? I have a bad memory. Like like when, like 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 I do angels is such a long play, but I just rehearsal. I just kind of like got my lines down because I was in rehearsal. Yeah, in my opinion, with me, time with line learning with, with remembering lines is the, is the, is the is the key for me. When I did Dev Drop, obviously me and Courtney had the biggest the biggest roles in it. A lot of lines. A lot of drag line. those other losers. A lot of lines, and with me, it's just the more you do it in rehearsal, the more you just run the lines. The more they just you just need time. With in my opinion, that's how I'd work. Or with lyrics, though, I, it works for me by writing them down with lines too. Um, but with stage plays, a lot like when your lines are tied to different actions and different things you're doing, it helps you memorize because you know when I'm going to this side of the room, I know what scene it is and running it with other people too. Um, so. Uh, so Vivian has the, the 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 Jane Crawford part. Shay has the straight man, the straight role, which I feel like Shay often um, ends up in these roles that are just very straightforward. The Mama Bear, yeah. Um, this role, she just often ends up landing in these roles that are just like prefer me very straightforward. I prefer dinner rolls. You know, I love a tootsie roll. Yeah, tootsie rolls, butterfly. Are good too. <laughs> That's uh oh, all. let me see that tootsie roll. <laughs> um, yeah, I, mean, I obviously would. I want to. I would love a slapstick role. Um, if I was in this show, I probably would have would have preferred Raja's role. Really? Which I thought Raj did a really good job. Cool. I, I thought Raj did a really really good yeah, job I did. in the role. Uh, I thought that um, I thought that you did a good job. I thought that the Vivian did a good job. I thought that Raj did a pretty good job. Those are probably my three favorite performances. Yeah, and, and Jada, Jada just, I mean, I don't know what Jada could have done more for her. I mean, she could have been, like, really, like, like Jada could have been, like, Velma from Scooby-Doo. Like, overly, like, clumsy and nerdy and geeky. Maybe that, like, really played that. Like, Raja took her small, ugh, ugh, cute, like, all of that stuff. I think maybe Jada could have done more of that as the nerdy kid. Like, knocking stuff over and be like, oh, guys, like, very urkily. <laughs> <laughs> what? Why are you laughing? What, bitch? about you doing these parts is so funny. You'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> That's what Raja did. She like, someone would be like, I like his like, oh, cool. <laughs> what? I was talking about these, these looks on the road away. <laughs> I don't know why that's just so funny to me. It's something about you doing that is just funny. Um, and Trinity role, Trinity's role as the, as the ditzy. When you, okay. We talk about well, Jen Tristan, Trinity plays this role a lot. She does. She it's likes kind, to be the dumb. It's like it's, it's kind of the role she played in Out of Two One Hope. Mm -hmm. She yeah. likes to be the dumb ditzy one. Which I mean, 
There is, you know, uh, Kevin Hart has a has a career playing the same role over and over and over again. So if it of, works, you know, do it. A lot of actors get tech drag guys. Kevin Hart. You just dragged him. No, you I'm just talking my, I'm you talking just myself. said you I just said a fuck. Yeah, Kevin Hart dragged. Are you scared of Kevin Hart? Do you know, do you know are guys? You, are you afraid of Kevin Hart? Yeah, I'm afraid of Kevin Hart. I'm just asking. You know? Yeah, I'm afraid of Kevin Hart. Okay. You know, guys. So you're not. So you're not scared of Kevin Hart. I'm not scared of Kevin Hart. <sighs> You know guys are walking around like this, like that glove shirt that that's just walking around like this all the time? Mm-hmm. I think that's so stupid. Maybe that's just how they really, their posture is. No, like. they're not. They're not. Like, you know how dancers are like this? But that's different. But it's from it's from training. Like, from all the training, they end up, they just kind of end up like I this. went to school with dancers, so I know. You didn't go to school with dancers. That's not true. Who, who? Na- name five. Wait, my entire school had an entire dance program. What, what your, school, your school only had singers. No, that's niggas not true. Only singing in a couple of these niggas. That's not true. Piano we had players. ABT American Ballet. Theater. You know your choir college. Y'all was singing. Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah. But in high school for four years, we oh, had ABT. High school. I'm not talking about high school. I'm talking about co- collegiate <laughs> level dancers, honey. Everyone, everyone had a, 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 a one. That's not bitch. We had Alvin Ailey at our school and American Ballet Theater. And ABT is one of the top, not the top, one of the top uh, ballet school. For theater, for, for boy, boy, boy. Your little high school friends was not popping. Yes, like they that. were. They were literally on stage. What are they doing now? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Tislam, you hear that? Tislam, you hear what this bitch had to say about you? What they doing? Tislam Boo, you hear what this bitch has to say about you? Okay. Mm-hmm. And uh, Dermika and Dermika Dawson, you heard what this bitch had to say about y'all at my school? <laughs> anyway, don't you ever come for Dermika Dawson ever again. <laughs> Uh, oh, I want to say Janixa. Okay. Janixa Bravo as our director. It was... Oh, yeah, that's right. She was really, really, really good. Because I like... She didn't treat... Was it too earnest, though? I don't think and so. And I was like, this is just so earnest. It's I, like, she's like directing an <laughs> Ava DuVernay film. I feel like... I feel like she was giving us, like... It was very earnest. But at the same time, like... You, like... A lot of us go out, outside of this. Yes, we know this is over the top drag ridiculousness. I get that. Bigger, <laughs> big girl, bigger, bigger, bigger. Big. <laughs> like, I don't know. That was the time that Alyssa Edwards, Father uh, Rizzo, season the, ten. <laughs> bigger girl, bigger. Like Cameron Michaels was was was, was rolling on stage. She's like, no, girl, bigger, bigger, bigger. I just want to just go. <laughs> that was such weird direction. <laughs> bigger. <laughs> But because a lot of us go out of the show and we really do pursue like a real, not real, I don't want to say like saying that drag race is whatever. <laughs> oh my God, you're so st- silly. We go and do like other things like on Pose, on um, Tales of Two Cities. Um, Tales of Tales the of City. The- don't you ever discredit my work. I was on Tales <laughs> of the City. Honey. Tales Basically City. every episode. We're going to not do. Not a little uh, appear in guest spot. <laughs> We going to do like big stuff, so it like I like that Janixa was. She was giving. Can you name two more of my credits, please? Oh my God, it'd be nice. Um, Sipping Rivalry podcast and Sipping Watchery podcast. Those are the two credits you get. Wow. And then so we we go on to do this stuff. So it's nice to have a, a, a director like Janixa giving us real and RuPaul. Because Janixa was there, RuPaul was leaning into. I mean, RuPaul always gets good critiques too, but like they were both giving us really good stuff that that felt very valuable and like that we can like take outside of this. You ever seen RuPaul in Crooklyn? I'm not. You've seen Crooklyn? I've never seen Crooklyn. Spike it's Lee. So, yeah, I never seen I it. feel like it's just. You, I know. I I'm know. I'm shocked. I know. I'm. Sh- I, I know. I've never seen you like this. <laughs> no, Crooklyn. Crooklyn is. It's not like a brilliant film or anything, but I do just remember seeing RuPaul in it and being like, "What is going? on? Oh, this is so wild." Sorry, Spike. He, he was great in it though. He didn't mean that, Spike. No, Spike is a patron. He's a, he's a, he's a stepdad. Me and Spike Lee did a thing together one time. I know. Spike Lee's up. He's Spike Lee has tweeted about our podcast on, as a patron. That is, that is not true. I'm not lying, Bob. This is like, I mean. It is easy to find out. If, it's so easy to find out if y'all are lying. All I have to do is go to Spike Lee's Twitter and then search Sibling Rivalry. This was like in like 2000, it's like 20, and then in the pandemic, he did this. I mean, go look. <laughs> y'all are so, yes. What did he say? What he said? He said he. It wasn't a, a long drawn up thing. He was like, they asked him about his like favorite podcast. He put the read us and someone else, some Easter Ray podcast. This <laughs> thing ain't never tweeted about us. Y'all lying. <laughs> <after>. <laughs> okay, let's then we do the, the, the thing. Yeah, he's just all, all the gay podcasts. <laughs> he was like, I love the read, and I love something rival. You know, Easter Ray got no gay, no gay, no gay oh, podcast. Gay <laughs> <laughs> um, any other things you remember from the acting challenge? 
Um, that's, that's pretty much. I, <laughs> 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 what? You are ridiculous. <laughs> Let's get into the lurks. Serving lurks, honey. Netta, please. <laughs> Oh my god! Anyone making a knitter please jokes there? No, Bob. Everyone Which was, ones? Uh, Who said them? <laughs> knitter please, my knitter, my right. knitter, my knitter, my knitter. Um, RuPaul's. I wish I, I. I said it before. I said it again. I really wish RuPaul did the theme. I don't think so. And someone told me why he would not do a theme because it would be it would be RuPaul competing with not competing with the girls, obviously because he's RuPaul. But like you don't want to put a RuPaul like let's say like, like let's say someone someone had a better need to look different you know what I mean like RuPaul I just want get why, I get why RuPaul doesn't do the thing but but also I still wish that RuPaul would do that I just I want to see RuPaul in a need to look yeah you know what I mean um I what do you think about this look I think it looks pretty good it's so tiny why is it so there we go this is beautiful this is a great look I yeah. lo- I I think RuPaul looks so stunning in this look. Uh, Ross is gonna wear these these jackets. Ross is going to wear. These, it's his thing now. These jackets. It's his thing. The, the 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 sparkly bomber jackets. It used to be the suits. The suits. But I think because him and Carson would both wear suits all the time. I think you know Carson be. Eating. Car- no Carson. Carson is Carson's a, is 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 literally a stylist. Yeah, Carson. I, I love Carson so much, and I love Ross too. Um, and I love Janix's look. Yeah, it's cool. I, I'm not like obsessed with it, but I think that Genix does look cool. It's very, it's very like I'm. Sure, I think it's, it has to be Gucci. It's what is what Gucci's been doing for like the past two or three years. It's like almost a little house on the prairie, but make it fashion. You know what I mean? Yeah, Michelle just dressed like a witch these days. <laughs> Michelle's just always dressed like a witch. Like, witch, witch Teresa. Like she is always just like a witch. <laughs> Um, all right, let's get into these looks. You know, the Vivian's look is so good. It looks so expensive, yeah. so well done, so heavy. Yeah, it was. So hot. It, 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 it came in its own black bag suitcase thing. It was a huge look. I can't imagine how much time was spent making this. Yeah. And Viv, and a little thing that happened with her on the runway, like something was, was going on with her corset. It was like cutting off the circulation to like a part of her leg, whatever. So like she had to be like, un, like after they gave her her critiques, they had to like un, get her out of her thing. And she just sat on the runway because she was like, I'm going to pass out. But also, no shade. Why wear a corset with this? Like, girl, no one can even tell you're wearing a corset. When she was walking, you could tell. Not like this, you can't. But when she, like, took her hands out, you can see the silhouette. Otherwise, she'd just be like a big blob. I don't know. I think if you're wearing hip pads and titties and some sort of shapewear in general, when you wear something this big, I don't know if you need to wear I mean, we do our, our show, and I wear a corset in the beginning of the second night where I'm wearing this, this like, this big onesie. For, I'm wearing it for time, yeah. obviously. But otherwise, I don't know. But it, that doesn't matter. She looks absolute. This is a. This is a. This was probably. I don't know. This is one of the best runaways of the season. Really? I really of the think so. Season? Everyone looks so good. Yeah, I, I think so. You, yeah, you might be right. Actually, I would agree. I would agree. It's, it's, it's a really good one. Everyone had really, really interesting and diversified looks. Shea Coulee. This was so major. It looks so good. It looks amazing. The ball cap was really insane. Like she laid it so. Perfectly. No, it was bitch like me is remarkably done. A bitch like me is a sunset queen. I would have shaved my head off because I would not trust myself would, to put a would, ball. Would you have shaved? How would you have built up the courage, Monet, to shave your head? Well, y'all how know how could you have done this? Shakeway is not one of the ball black bitches. Shakeway has a head full of hair. She she can't stop herself from growing hair on her head. Well, also when we are when you are bald, you just don't view shaving your head as that big of a deal. This is People true. People who have hair are like I could not and not be like when when folks be like stressing about going bald and you be just in the room like. <laughs> like if I went bald, I would just kill myself. <laughs> if I would never leave the house, I would break up with my. I would never go out in public again. If I went bald, I know. Imagine losing your hair. I'd be like, I know. We used to be bald headed. Anyway, girl. yeah. Or folks be like, I actually shaved my head for this. I'm like, okay. But it grows back for you. But Bob, if you had dreads, you would not be, you would not feel the same. If, if, if you had your long... Uh, uh, she doesn't have longs. I'm saying, but... It, but, but it's, if I had like a short haircut, I'd be like, I would buzz my... I've shaved my... When I had hair, I shaved my head. And I was like, it'll grow back. There's and, always it, the, and it did. There's always the unknown that this, it might be your last time shaving. It wasn't. 
I mean, one day it was, but the, the day I shaved my head, I decided to just keep keep it short forever. But I remember I, when you did it. But I shaved my head when I had hair for like projects, and I, I remember when you, I remember when you when you shaved your head the the, the final time. I remember. <laughs> you mean the first time? <laughs> the last time was a couple days ago. I need, I need to do it again, actually. Evie Evelyn Audley. This is a really cool look. And she hand dyed this, right? She hand dyed it herself. She made this all herself. She made the wig herself too. The wig is the wig is crocheted. Oh really? Yeah, it's a crochet knitted wig. Oh no, this looks great. Yeah, this is this 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 entire run. Everyone just did such a good job. It's this is such a great runway. Like yeah. time, like oh, it looks so good. I love the gradient. Yeah, it looks really good. She did a very good job with this. Evie, Evie better work. work. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Jinx Mon Coon. Hey, hey, stop! <laughs> stop saying that. <laughs> This is Zero Waste Daniel. Oh, is it? This is Zero Waste Daniel did this. Oh, and Zero, see, Zero Waste, you got something on the show. Cause Monday it's Monday. in Untucked. I saw it. I'm going to find It's literally, they didn't put in the episode because when, when I wore your hoodie for, we were going to, I was going to do Whoopi Goldberg on Snatch Game. So when I went up to talk to Rue, but they didn't show my talk with Rue about my Snatch Game. That's why I didn't see it. I went to go talk to Rue and I had a sweater on and then um, I was doing my Whoopi stuff. And because, you know, Whoopi on The View, she wears, Whoopi wears like a really crazy shoe, her dreads, and like a crazy sweater. She loves her crazy sweater. So I was going to wear that one as my crazy sweater. And like a white collar shirt like Whoopi. Jinx doing. looks fantastic in this. <laughs> um, at first, I didn't realize that this was uh, yarn because it, it just looks like sequin fat, like like a regular sequin fabric. Is it a sequin yarn? It's a sequin fabric. And they, they knitted it. it, yeah. Well, it looks really good. Yeah. Um, this is very smart. Um I don't love the shawl. Yeah, I don't know the shawl. I, 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 I wish she did not do the shawl. The shawl is the part. I'm like, Jinx, why the shawl? You know? But this looks so good. Though. It looks amazing. It's, it's, it, and great. she really made it. She put it in the... I mean, I, this, she is going to wear this silhouette until the brakes fall off. <laughs> but also, if it looks good, you know, rock it. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Trinity is a this was made by a fan, she said. Yeah, well the fan, yeah, the fan made this whole thing for her. But it's like you, a fan just bought it to a meet and greet? No, so you see the thing in her hand? This fan in Florida, I think, she makes this thing called Grumpkins. Have you, you never gotten a, a Grumpkin from this fan? She made this like little dolls that kind of look like demons. And they have like six a eyes. Grumpkin? Yeah. I'm listening, keep talking. And then so the fan made Trinity's Grumpkin thing, and then like, Trinity was like, hey, do you knit? And she's like, yeah. And then Trinity, I guess, gave her the idea of what she wanted. And the fan did this whole look together for Trinity. Um, but the fan makes Grumpkins. These little dolls. Grumpkin? No, no that's Grumpkin. not it. Yeah. I mean, I, would like, I, I, would, I like to think that some of my designers are fans of mine. So I've had fans make me stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I hope one of my designers is a fan of mine. And Trinity mixed it with this cheetah print. And she had like a cheetah kitty cat wig on. This is a cute look. I yeah. like this. Like, I think I didn't like it when I first saw it, but I actually really like it. I think it's really clever. I love a kitty cat wig with with stuff on it. I love a kitty cat wig with like things in the wig. You remember, you remember my Fun Fetty wig? I remember your Fun Fetty wig. I love a kitty cat wig with with a print on it. It's so cute to me. And she had she she kind of surely will find a way to put a train in the look. That yeah, her, her 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 that her uh, scarf was going. It was so long. It was like a mini train. I can't there remember go. how long it was taken to make this. Jacob Oops. found it. There's her. There, there's the Grumpkins. You have to minimize us. Oh right. That looks like it just takes so long to make. She oh. makes these dolls. Grumpkin. Dolls. You have a Grumpkin. I have a Grumpkin. I have a two from her. Must be nice. You know. Must be nice. That's very sweet. Um. Okay. Up next. We're in Florida. We're going to Florida. Am I going to get a Grumpkin? Maybe. I don't know if it's Orlando, though, but she's in Florida. Monet Exchange. Um, this is a this is a look by Chelsea B, the the fabulous, fabulous, fabulous crocheter in Chicago, based in Chicago. And um, this look is obviously what? Get out of my square. Tell me about Chelsea B. Get out of my square. I just want to know more about Chelsea B. She's a fabulous designer on TikTok. I found her on TikTok. You found her on TikTok. Bob found her on TikTok. Okay. And what I was thinking about looks to make, <laughs> she was originally going to make me the red one that I wore on Super Celebrity Drag Race that I po recently posted on my Instagram. But when she sent it, it was because I was not able to go to Chicago to, to, to fit with it. It was a little too short. So I couldn't wear that. And literally the day before I left, I was like, girl, okay, scrap. I know you sent that look. What about this other one? Can you make this and send it to me at Dragons? And she made this in like 
two days. How did you end up wearing it? Did it? Did she link it? Oh, because after I came back from Drag Race, I had a gig in Chicago, and she added a second uh, thing it. to it to make it longer. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed this look, and I feel it's very street New York. I mean, you know, you know me, I love a little streetwear moment, and I, I'm really proud of this look. Yeah, this is this is a great look. This, this I, I I was triggered by this wig. I remember this is the wig you wore that one time we were uh, oh podcast. podcasting, and all of a sudden you just had a wig, and you're like, "This is my this is the new me." <laughs> I said, they, they need to put this character in Rugrats as the big bully in, in the playground. As soon as the wig came out, I was like, I know this wig. I also, my mom had this lock wig that, I, that she I had. remember you 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 did a, you, you, you video called me and with it all. I was like, on. I want to start wearing this wig. You should. Why not? Part of me wants to be, be a person who wears wigs in the daytime, but they're just, it's the too hassle. much. You, you'll be one of those girls on TikTok with the... No, 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 not like that. I mean, I, would, I wouldn't wear like, I would wear like a fro or like, oh. or like something with bangs. <laughs> I like that lock wig that I had. You know what I mean. Anyway, this this look is this look is very very. Cool. But you just still glue it. Imagine Bobby doing something. Yeah, Bob always doing something. You doing something and your wig flies off. So I'm like, what? Bobby always chasing somebody around doing a TikTok. Your shit will fly off. You got to glue it down. You're gonna wear it every day. I, I, I'm not that physical in my day. I'm not just like <laughs> <laughs> like whipping my hair around. Um, I'm not wearing I'm not wearing pads here. Don't work. You guys should know that. <laughs> do I? Yeah, do you guys know that? Well, folks who don't wear pads be so proud of it. I'm not wearing pads. They'd be so proud. I'm not, and that's just letting people know. Bob, you asked me on the watcher, y'all. Has Bob asked me like three times, are you wearing pads here? So I'm just I'm just answering your question before you ask me. I'm just saying, folks, who, folks be so proud. Oh, yeah, Troy. Oh, yeah, this is you at the disco thing when you had. At, at Leslie Jones' birthday party. Leslie Jones' birthday party, yeah. Also, you you know who wears daytime wigs? Troy, Troy C. Ford. He, in his videos, Troy's always wearing a wig. Troy loves a wig, a daytime I wig. I don't know Troy C. Ford. Oh, you don't know Troy. But I know I mean, I know, I know who they are. Okay. We've not met. Got it. We know Law Roach wears a full piece. Bitch. I saw Law Roach on the plane, and I was like, oh, you have short hair. Word, Bob. Oh, hey. Hi, Lawrence. I saw those signs said Lawrence Roach. I said, oh, you know, when you get up and there's a little sign. Uh -huh. This thing was getting her, yeah, every getting time, her, her car. Every time I get up to the airport, I have a sign for a car for me. Um, this is <laughs> Jada Essence Hall. One time we were, we were, one time we were, we were at, uh, <laughs> we were like all getting off the plane from something from we're here. We're in Utah. And it was all of us. It was like me, Shantula, Eureka, Steve Warren, Johnny Ingram, one of the creators of the show, Nina, Nina, who's like the head of like unscripted at HBO. We all are getting off the same plane for uh, a, a layover. Mm -hmm. And um, then Shantula gets into this little car and then like drives to the next gate. But it was so weird because like we were all like, <laughs> we're like bye Shangela that's very sounds like Shangela oh, you have, have you ever had the the, the, the Delta experience at a at, at thing at, at, at um, LAX my Delta experience when you go through when you like get to the gate when you're like checking in they're like oh, Mr. Burton are you diamond I'm, well, they, they can see like what, what they can stand on a white ass I'm like yeah they're like do you want our, 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 our Delta chauffeur service they and from you from the check-in desk, they 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 take you through TSA. You don't show anything. They just take you through TSA. Then you go through this like side door, and you, they take you to the lounge. And then, then when, from the lounge, you go through the side door, and then you get in a Porsche on the tarmac, and then they drive you to your gate. And like you don't ever go through the thing. You go straight up the stairs to the plane. You just sit on the plane until everybody gets there. And you don't you don't go through TSA. Nothing. I've never had that at JFK, but I've I've been escorted. LAX, I have. LAX, I mean, but I have been escorted from a, 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 a through a connecting flight overseas. Someone's like, Mr. Cole, we're right this way. Yeah, it's so we're random. We're gonna drive you to your and I'm like, I did not sign up for this, but I'll take it. I think so I think something they offer you some of like the crazy perks. So you can be like, I wanna do this, you know what I mean? So you can start paying for it. Also, Jackie, Jackie Ina posted, have you ever seen the on, on TikTok? A, lot, a few celebrities have done it. The special like celebrity check-in uh, uh, terminal. Mm-mm. Bob, you never seen this? Mm -mm. We're gonna take a short break. I have to show you this. Bob, we need to do it one time. Next time we go on like a really crazy trip, you and I should do the special. I just did TikTok it. Well, you have to just pay extra for it? It is it is paid extra. But I mean, we can try it one time just to be just to be ridiculous and over the top. The, the, the point of being over the top is like Monet mm -hmm. I don't know how over the top I am. Bob, you are Bob, you don't do, comment below. Do y'all think Bob is crazy and over the top? What makes me over the top? Bob, you are always on some shit. But how? How? <laughs> how? Welcome to the week in the life of an influencer slash content creator. 
This time I'm going to Rome with Valentino Beauty. I still get excited about trips, believe it or not. This was huge. <coughs> so, you know, I had to get the drip drip. Instead of getting dropped off at LAX, we actually flew out of the private suite terminal, which is incredible. It's a private terminal. They have a bar. You can order drinks. You can order food. It's really expensive, but I'm not going to lie. It's definitely worth it. The cocktails were so good. There's me. I'm excited. I'm giddy. Dennis tried caviar for the first time. Definitely could not be me, but he said it was good. Oh, and these jackfruit vegan tacos was busting. Oh, my God. It was so good. And the Zatar fries. If you ever go there, try the Zatar fries. The restaurant? And the drinks were good. So this is basically what TSA at the private suite terminal looks like. It's really short, really compact. And then they drive you straight onto the plane. So you don't actually, like, ever go. And, well, you technically do go into LAX, but I'll show you what it looks like. This is us on the flight line. Beep, beep. Hurry up. We got to go. This is the private car that's driving us to the plane. We had to wait for a little bit. There was a couple delays. Actually, there was well, that's, that's me, the rest is just uh, for the rest of it. Yeah, I mean, that, that is interesting. I mean, the most, I, I, I once, I did once fly private. Uh, Jacob, your mic. Baby, you're unmuted. Jacob, you're unmuted. There we go. Sorry, um, it costs $5,000 a year. Which is not, does not seem crazy. Bob, please stop doing that. Please Must stop doing that. Be <laughs> nice. Because I'm about to drop receipts on on on, on black. I'm about to drop, I'm about to drop them black receipts. How about that? Well, they must be. You are so. Well, they said that is nothing. You broke, bitch. Well, they said, listen, you broke, dusty bitch. That is nothing to me. That means literally nothing to me. Anyway, good. Wait, to sorry. Good. Jacob. It's five thousand a year for the membership. Then you get a private suite on top of that for another four thousand. So it's actually nine thousand, like nine thousand seven hundred for the salon as well. Monet, so it's, Monet sorry, that it's a little bit more than that. Monet so said, I, said that, that, I found that my Monet said I found that my couch cushions. Anyway, I, f- I find that in my pockets when I switch clothes for the winter. <laughs> okay, so you 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 flew you flew private. <laughs> so you flew you flew private for what again? For, <laughs> for legendary. I, when, when when I was when I was leaving Legendary, I had a gig, and I was I, I was like I can't I would love to be in there, but I literally just can't because I can't cancel this gig. I just cannot cancel this gig. It was a stand up gig. It had been rescheduled before because of COVID, and I was like I just don't want to re- I just don't want to reschedule it. It feels shady to do. And they were like, we will get you there. And I ended up flying on Kelly Clarkson's jet. How was it? It was really. Lo- you want to hear something embarrassing? Actually, tell me. It was, it was it was really so. There's no TSA. You just you just literally just go to the airport, and then you just get you just walk onto the plane. This little plane. Wow. I think you even have pictures or something. I, I never posted them. Though, anyway. Um, and then there's no, but there's no bathroom on the plane. Oh, shit. I didn't tell you that. And I had to pee. So what, what you have to be so in a bottle? I have to have Kennedy, bl- like, bl- like, bl- <laughs> Kennedy had to like block the people, the pilots, so I could pee. I had to be like, oh, I'm going to get some snacks. And then Kennedy was like, me too. And they were both acting like, so I had to chug water and then piss in this, bu- Kelly Clarkson, if, you, if you're watching this, I'm so sorry. So I had peed in the bottle and then I put the cap on the bottle and then I put the bottle in my bag and then I was like, oh my God. And then I just, when we got off the plane, I just rushed to the bathroom and threw the bottle away. <laughs> it was a Fiji water bottle. I'll never forget that. Oh my God, Bob. Yeah, it was wild, girl. And I kept thinking, so I better not have to pee again. If I have to pee again, I'm out of bottle. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I have to chug water in order to pee. So I, it, it was wild. It was wild. Anytime I chug water when I have to pee, it... I'm, maybe a psychological thing. I feel like my bladder is just about to explode, and I have to. If I don't pee in that moment, I'm gonna. Be no, it was wild, but that, but that was how. I, but if uh, I didn't get any pee anywhere, Kelly, if you, there was, I, I I kept it. I know there was some droplets on that floor. No, nope, I kept it. I kept it local. You got to put the pee hole right. And you're pissing the bottle. Of course, my car. Because you know many when you times. pee in the bottle, it's like there's a little it's bit of air. Yeah, and, yeah, and it, it, it makes pressure. Yeah, the air's like. <laughs> yeah, it's, the, the air's like. <laughs> Girl, so you gotta put the pee hole right on the. It is wild. You know what I saw? I, I, I but luckily my skinny little penis <laughs> could fit in the. Box. <laughs> I was I stumbled into sounding on the porn the other day, my and I was like, sounding looks so painful. Would you ever do sounding? I don't. I don't. 
at this current moment, I don't think I'm interested in doing any sounding. Because I think the, the notion is that you put the, the the thing down your urethra to simulate your prostate in some way with the vibrations. No, of no, no, no. I, I, it's not prostate. You cannot reach your prostate through your. They be they be like this long going down in there. Money. You cannot reach your prostate through your. Urethra. I don't think you can get into, but it can. The, I, I think the vibrations will like get there, just like you can touch get your prostate through your butthole. Yeah, but your prostate is right there. Like your prostate is at the butthole. You have to go through an entire erect penis. You cannot you cannot reach your prostate through your through your urethra. That's not a thing. I think it's a vibrate not touching. I think the vibrations can get there as well. Maybe that's I assume that it was just like that it feels like I assume that it just feels when you know when stuff travels through your urethra, it kinda of feels good. Peeing even kinda of feels good sometimes. If you really have to pee though. And I assume this just feels like peeing and coming a lot, but like consistently and nonstop. Oh. So Jada <laughs> Jada's like Oh, so yes, um, sounding you don't physically touch the prostate, but you can use sounding to to stimulate it. Yeah, that's what I, that's, that's, that's what I assume. Jada Essence Hall, this is a very cute look. Uh, this is this giving um the com- the big comfy couch. Yeah, that's what she's going for. This is very good look. I, I I love this. This is I just all the intricacies in these outfits are just so remarkable. I think Josh Wan made this as well. I Josh really was. love it looks like it's like dyed or slightly colored around the um the, the edges and the give ridges. Do a dimension, yeah. This is so good. Yeah. This is really good. And last but not least, Rashwa. This is this the, I think this is the only time Raja doesn't wear gray hair. Oh yeah, this is, oh my god, you're right. On the show and she looks stunning. This Barbarella fucking this is so good. Raja is I know I, I know I keep saying it, but I will just continue to say I think she gets fashion better than any girl who's ever been on Drag Race. I like it. I think it could have been a little more knitwear. Like, I feel like everyone else did, like, knitwear, and Raja did, like, a... Well, I think the entire middle piece is knitwear. I remember... I mean, again, I love oh, this look. Just boots. Knitwear with some boots. Like, her dress is as long as... Well, but, no, Shay has, has it everywhere. But I don't think that that, that thing is knit. Knit Shay's shawl is... is uh, yeah, but the rings are knitted. The boot things are knitted. Her, her uh, Shay's shoes are knitted. Like, do you, do you want to say why you hate Roger? Do you want to... Um, I hate like, her what because... what it is about her that you, you seem to... Week after week, you just give her harsher critiques than everyone else? You know, it's the gray hair. Must be ageism. Ageism. I love being ageist. It's my favorite nice. thing to do. Are right, you guys? You guys heard it here. Monet is in a, a extreme rivalry right now with the one and only uh, the 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 queen who gave her a chance at life. <laughs> Get out of my square, <laughs> Jacob. What are you tell, What are you trying to tell us? So in Shay's um, look from episode one, the hot couture look is she's wearing the same bracelets Raja is wearing in this look. Did Raja borrow those from Shay, or did they both just buy the oh, same really? bracelets? Oh, oh Shay had, they both had them. She, Raja had these from Abraham, and Shay has them from Abraham as well. They both have them. I thought Abraham should have been like, oh, just so, just so you know, I did send these exact same bracelets out with another girl. No, no, but Raja has had these for years from him. Mm-hmm. Oh, God. And I think Shay has had them for, Shay has went in with some looks before Drag Race too. I think they're just pieces in her, in their drag. You know what I mean? Gone it, gone it, gone yeah. it. Yeah. Um, so the winners of this challenge are uh, the Vivian and Raja. Do you agree? Um, uh, well, let me look at their knitwear. I do love Viv's look, and I do look because I think that you, Viv, and Raja all did a good job in the challenge. Mm-hmm. I think that Viv probably has one of my favorite looks of the evening. It just looks, it looks so well made and stuff. Not just that, but just like the. Um, I mean, a lot of effort went to all these, but something about this one is just like this big ass train. Have you ever knit before? I'm not. Not even kind of tried, thought about. I'm yeah. sort of knit. It takes so long mm. to make a scarf. Yeah. You know, Layla's grandma made me a blanket. Oh, that's so Jake, sweet. can you go get Layla's grandma's quilt, or, uh, Layla's grandma's blanket out, out of the um, thing? <laughs> Wait, Jacob. Just but how, we, we can't, we can't. We have to check this video. They could put it in for a second. Oh, okay. But um, yeah, Layla's grandma made this this uh this this quilt for me, and I was like, "Your grandma needs an Etsy." And Etsy, should I get? Should me and Layla's grandma do a look together? That'd be cute. On I mean, on we're here. So you finished season three. Wow. Now you think about it. Well, I mean, I have a designer. <laughs> I have a 
design. I'm gonna wear you here. You can you, you recap multiple designs. But I can also have them. It doesn't have to be for work. I do stuff outside of work here too. You like those pants? Since I, when? You, you like those drag race pants? I, I just wish I could see one again. <laughs> too bad. I'm, too bad she's dead after doing this all winter season. Too bad I'll never see her ever, ever again. <laughs> um, do I think that Raja and I really loved Viv, Raja's character i like her i like all these looks so yeah i can see this that 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 that, that top two makes sense to me how about you yeah i think i think um because roger's part was so small i guess roger's part also read more like when i watched the scene you know what i mean um but like in the thing it seemed like she, her and jada would have like they did have the same amount of parts but roger's did feel bigger when you end yeah. up watching the final uh thing so i could definitely see Raj as well and they end up uh lip syncing oh to- look jacob is showing it Oh yeah, that's that's yeah, that's that's the um it's cute. Isn't it cute? Oh, it's cute. Rainbow because gay. Is it rainbow? <laughs> it is rainbow. Oh, it just looks like I don't think it's because gay. I think she just likes colors and Bob, it's just red, blue, yellow. Oh, dragon. Wow. Call me a dumb bitch. Yeah, it's not it's not the full rainbow. It's yeah. it's red, yellow, blue, and green. Do you think that this was a um do you think that this was because Super Freaky Girls coming out and no. maybe listen, maybe Nikki, because you know Nikki is friends. With the with RuPaul and and Michelle, she was on the show, and maybe Nikki was like, "Just so you know, no, she's all right." No, that girl's on Rick. Rick James was wild. Oh yeah, girl, Rick James like Rick James was an absolute nut of a person who probably did a lot of problematic stuff. Uh huh. Tina Maria, a lot Tina of Marie, a lot of it because of how like, yeah, he Tina was. Marie. What about, what about Tim? They had like a really tumultuous uh, history together. Oh, did they? Probably. I think so. I thought maybe it's Tim. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Rick James. Um, but this is uh, this is one of the lip syncs that Rajan knew. <laughs> she knew the words to this one. Do you know the song? I mean, I I she's know. a very freaky girl. The, the type you don't take home to mother. mother. I, I, I have you um on the pool. Finish it. <laughs> she will never let your spirits down. Get, get her off the streets. Oh, um, but words. and I think that Viv, I love Viv, but she was a mess in the lipstick. She was trying to do too many. Things. She was trying to do everything. Every girl at once. does it seems like a Raja song and not. Oh yeah, for sure. Vivian. But Viv was trying to like she then she tried to do the thing with the water. Remember when she went all the way back to the yeah, stage she, and put the water on her. Tits? But also, why didn't was she? But she was wearing a bra under it. I don't think she. I think the shirt was just so thick. Just, just the, the this quality, is a very nice t-shirt. The, qual- <laughs> the quality was too hot in the UK. They still got that nice quality. I think it was a very. Th- or maybe she did have a bra. I don't remember. I, I know I didn't see nipples, and I'm like, if you're gonna pour water on your jugs, I need to be seeing nipples. And then she did that water thing, and she tried to pour, and it's, you try to put water on yourself and drag, and then your lashes are looking crazy. And she came back to try to do the cartwheel that she like. She, it was. I was like, Viv, I, I love you, gal, but it was it was a messy lipstick. Yeah, gal. So our homegirl Raja donning her gray. Uh, Curly, I love Raja so much. She's with somebody auntie, somebody mommy. Um, and then Raja decides that she's going to block. Who did she block? Who do you think she blocked? I don't remember. Who did she block? Jada Messon Hall. It's time. It was time. It's time. She did it. She was she was asking for she's her in episode, the lead. And she was asking for it. She was like, guys, here's the reason why you shouldn't block me. Right? And she's literally in the lead. It's like, girl, okay. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was, it was Jada's time for sure. Time to put a kibosh. All right. Thank you all for joining us. Kelly Clarkson, again, I apologize for pissing in your plane. It really wasn't personal, but I just had to use it. But he doesn't... Have, I don't want... You don't you know, apologize to me for anything you said to me this episode. No, do you, do you want to apologize for anything? No. I think we're in the same place. Great. Thank, Thank you all for you watching. We'll be back next week with episode nine of All Stars 7. Can you say nine in German? Eins, zwei, nine, drei, drei, drei. Eins, zwei, drei. Oh, no, nine. It's nine. Nine. Correct. Bitch, you don't know. I do know. Okay, let's do a count from, from one to ten. Eins, Eins zwei, drei, vier, fünf, sieben, sieben, neun, acht, neun. Kachiben. <laughs> Peace, y'all. Bye.